Welcome to another unit in this workbook statistics, this time talking about the so-called goodness of fit test. The goodness of fit test is a chi-squared test which wants to test whether a given normally distributed variable x follows a certain distribution p. Our null hypothesis therefore is x follows the given distribution p and h1 the alternative hypothesis being it does not follow the given distribution. The test statistic looks similar to most chi-squared statistics which we know. We have the actual values minus the expected values divided by the expected values after squaring this distance. And we sum this up for all observations which we have and we get the final test statistic. The question in this regard always is, how do we actually get the expected values, the expected frequencies? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy and straightforward. We simply have to sum up all of our um, observations, all of our frequencies, then multiply them with the frequencies from the given distribution. That's the n times pi. So that's actually the I would say the easiest of the chi-squared tests we discuss here. Once we have this test statistic, we can also look up a reference statistic, which here also is pretty straightforward. Just chi-squared i minus 1, 1 minus alpha. Alpha is the margin of error. The i, that's how many different groups I'm going to compare here. That's actually how many i's I do have here. If I'm comparing four different groups, have the probability for each of these groups, then I'm going to use four minus one. So I'm looking up three, one minus alpha. The table I'm going to use in this regard is this one. That's a classical one for the chi-squared distribution. Up here, we have 1 minus alpha, so this might in some cases be misleading. This is actually 1 minus alpha. So that's the whole part on the right of the comma. So if we work with a margin of error of 5%, this would be the column to use. Then we have i minus 1. As I said, if we use an example where the rows, the number of groups, is actually 4, then the degrees of freedom, so 1 minus alpha, would be 3 we would look up in row 3 and we would get this value. Then, well, as with all tests, we're going to compare test and reference statistic. If the test statistic is larger, we can reject the H0 hypothesis, which would mean X does not follow our given distribution. If, however, the reference statistic is larger, we would have to keep the H0 hypothesis, and this would mean X follows the given distribution. Well, that was already was everything there is on the goodness of fit test. So the only thing I would say to remember is here, how do I get the expected frequencies? Then you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this short and brief session. I should say goodbye and see you next time.